us remain standing for our first hymn this morning, page 82, or you can follow along on the screen for Victory in Jesus. for our affirmation of faith this morning is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Flowers this morning, sanctuary flowers are to the glory of God and in honor of Billy Kane's birthday with love from his mama and dad. Aww. Yeah, that's sweet. And so is Billy, he's a good guy. Other announcements this morning, their school supply collection still going on for one more week. Yeah. And you see we've got some things uh, accumulating over here for Emma Hutchison. So let's keep it coming in. Next Sunday will be the last time. Anything else you got, Carol? That's it. Okay. Um, any other announcements? I'm going to in just a second. Anybody else? Okay, just a reminder, next Sunday, the 28th, Reverend Jeff Coleman, who is our presiding elder slash district superintendent for those who can't interpret uh, the new newness, is going to be here with us at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And he's going to meet with the congregation as a whole, whoever wants to come. Please do, go get lunch, come back. He's going to talk to us about this 
the state of the Global Methodist Church, and he's going to talk to us about the uh, process of identifying and coming uh, to a conclusion, the pastoral search for Mount Zion. So please be here uh, for that important meeting next Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Anything else? How about prayer concerns this morning? I will say Billy Simpson off the top of my head real quick. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Janet's getting okay. We'll keep Janet in our prayers for sure. Yes, Diana. Kelly Ammerman. Kelly Ammerman. She was in an accident this week and she's doing well. Um, God was with her for sure. Anyone else? There's a friend of mine named uh, uh, Crystal Gephardt, Crystal Darrell. She uh, had been suffering from cancer. I brought her up several times, you guys. She's doing so much better, and God be praised. She's, she's in stage four and actually has had a rebound, and we'll, we hope that that will at least give her some time of joy in her life. Yes, sir? Uh, Shelby Love and Jonathan Love. Shelby and Jonathan, okay. Yes, ma'am, over here. Patricia Lindsay. Patricia. Okay, Patricia Lindsay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Cynthia Dotson and the Jackson family. Cynthia Dotson and the Jackson family. Okay. Yes. Gene Wellington and Travers. Gene Wellington and Travers Mercies. Okay. Anyone else? I have a praise. Yes. My daughter and her husband finally have power in Houston. Yeah, they live in Houston. They've been struggling, haven't they? Well, good. They got power back. That's a good thing. Anything else? Anybody else? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father God, we come to you this morning having laid before you those lives that we ask you to reach out and touch and comfort in the varying degrees of need. You know them. We, we don't need to detail them to you. You know full well. We ask you to reach down, touch them, and love them. Father, we bow before you in repentance this morning. Please forgive us for the hardness of our hearts, where the goodness and love of your spirit lies dormant. Show us how to love the hard to love people in our lives, even those we consider to be our enemies. You have said that our enemies are not flesh and blood, but things. Therefore, we are called to love everyone no matter what they believe, what they say, or what they do, no matter what they look like or how they live. Soften our hearts to embrace the love of Jesus that you have so free, freely given to us as a gift and allow us to sow it into the hearts of others. Lord, may Mount Zion, your church, have such fertile soil that only love can grow here. May the righteousness of Christ that we sow result in a crop that overflows with love into our community. Protect us from hardened hearts, the unplowed ground that cannot possibly bear any fruit for the sake of your kingdom. Jesus, our Savior, turn our nation back to your heart. Replace hatred and ugliness and anger with love and beauty and peace. Use your people to lead the way towards sowing righteousness in our land so that we're able to reap your unfailing love in our broken culture. May the hard ground of unbelieving hearts become soft and pliable in your hands so that our nation <clears throat> becomes a light for the rest of the nations. We pray that all of this be so as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, and as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let's all stand and join in our second hymn, Waymaker. You'll see it on the screen. Alan, I'm going to do one quick announcement. Oh, okay. Go ahead on. All right. As you know, Andy's out of town, and so we're doing something a little new. But this is Andy's idea. <laughs> no, it's all of our ideas. We, we, we all talked about this. We've been kind of praying about it for a while. We're going to do a little bit of different song. The second song is going to be a little more interactive with you to be able to hear the song and the words up here. There's some little more current songs that you might hear on the radio, etc. cetera, uh, praise worship type songs. It's a little different new, uh, but again, the fact that Andy's not here doesn't mean that he doesn't know. I didn't do it behind his back. Um, but he does fully know. We're all excited about this. So that's what's going on with this Waymaker today. So stand up, sing how you want to do it, whatever. Follow the directions on here, and I think it'll be self-explanatory. You'll enjoy it. Before you get started, one quick thing. I don't want to, I'm about to forget it, and I can't do it. Debbie Robinson, thank you, darling. Yes. <laughs> thank you. So much. Debbie said it's been five or six years since we put her through this. No, since she played here. So thank you. Thank you so much, darling. who you are. Please be seated. Ask the ushers to come down now for the morning tithes and offerings and gifts. Boy, that is who you are. I like that. That's, that gets your juices going right there. Ooh. 
Let us pray. All good gifts come from you, dear Lord. And from these gifts, we bring this offering. Help us to use it for the advancement of your purpose in this place and all the places that we might reach out in your name and for the benefit of all of those in need. Amen. seated. Our speaker has requested that he do the scripture himself this morning as he does his message, so we're going to afford him that pleasure. I'm sure it'll be ours as well. And that's the child to come down for the children's message this morning. That's you, girl. That's you, girl. Dagny? <laughs> oh, if it's going to be anybody, it's got to be you. You will absolutely take care of it. Come, come close to me. There you go. All right. Okay. Okay. You can sit here with me. We'll do this. All right. Think about how many different kinds of touch there are. There's a touch that's not so nice, like hitting, pinching, or poking. Why do people do that? Why do, you, why do people pinch or hit or poke? Yeah, probably. Okay, they're probably not nice and don't know any better. Good, good choice, good answer. Okay, then there's playful touching, like tickling. <laughs> and there's messing up hair. <laughs> then there's a loving touch. Sometimes when someone is sad and you don't know what to say, you might just put your hand on that person's arm. 
that helps the person feel better. But if you really love someone, what would you do? Hug yeah, hug them. Yes, yes. All right. I know you do. She really loves her daddy. I, we know that. So we don't need words to let people know how we feel about them. Touches are special ways of talking without words. Here's a message from the Bible. A ruler from the synagogue named Jairus came to that place. Jairus saw Jesus and bowed before him. The ruler begged Jesus, saying, Again and again, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her. Then she will be healed and will live. So the dad in this story was right. He knew that if Jesus touched his little girl, that she would get better. When Jesus touched the girl, she got up well and sat up. Jesus healed her with his touch. We may not be able to heal with our touch. We probably can't do that. But we can make people feel better by giving them a hug or a pat on the back. When we use touch like Jesus did, people will know how much we care for them. When you get, when you get back to your seat, I want you to give your daddy a big hug and let them know. I don't know. Well, probably because you're here. So let's say a quick prayer, okay? Dear Jesus, please let us be able to touch people and let them know how much we care and make them feel better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Dagny goes back to her seat, let's all stand and greet our neighbor and tell him God loves you. When the best of me is barely breathing, when I'm not somebody I believe in, hold on to me. When I miss the light that God has stolen, when I'm slamming all the
Cause I know nobody loves me better. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. We have the distinct pleasure and honor this morning of having a very distinguished retired pastor from the Methodist Church to fill our pulpit. The Reverend Al Cunningham is a native of North Georgia, West Georgia, excuse me, Northwest Georgia, Cartersville. Get in there. His wife, Lynn, lovely lady down front, who's now our new assistant church secretary. That's is that correct? correct. <laughs> She was back in the back giving Carol some pointers this morning, and uh, Carol introduced her to me, and not as, as Al's wife, but the new secretary. Uh, Lynn and Al have four kids and 10 grandkids. That's a big group at Christmas time, isn't it, girl? Yeah. Okay. Al got his bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Georgia. You like that one, Lisa, don't you? You good with that? <laughs> and his uh, Master of Divinity from Candler. He served for 29 years in ministry. He is currently at, still active in the Faith Methodist Church in Cartersville. And we welcome him this morning and appreciate our coming to help us as we forge ahead at Mount Zion in our search for a permanent pastor as Al steps in and helps us out this morning. Come, Reverend Cunningham. <clears throat> Just a little bit I'll tell you. Some of you already know this, but uh, <clears throat> it's been uh, an interesting journey here this morning. <laughs> Yesterday, I'll just back up, uh, I was uh, baptizing a great niece. And uh, family was there, and we had a, a, a good crowd and enjoyed that, and was out most of the day doing that, and <clears throat> came in last night. And I made sure that uh, I had the right GPS coordinates in my phone. Uh, I knew I didn't need them to get from Cartersville into Atlanta, but I'd like to know once I got to Atlanta exactly how to get here. So uh, I told Lynn as we were leaving, I said, um, I'm going to tell you when to, to turn that on. You've got my phone. And she did. And I said, I, I'm going to do it when the speed limit drops inside the perimeter from 65 to 55, which makes sense. We're getting close to the Midtown Connector. And I've been through that sometimes when it's been a parking lot. And I know all of you have done that also. It's the wonders of Atlanta. Uh, I think they copied their uh, interstate system after Los Angeles. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but uh, it plugged us in. And then when we got uh, right almost to Midtown, it said take I-85 North. <laughs> I didn't want to do it, but I thought maybe there's a wreck or something blocking the interstate, so I did. And then... Lynn told me, oh, it's taking us to Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> to Mount Zion, Methodist Church there. But uh, so then we had, <clears throat> had to turn around and get here. Uh, and then several other people that normally are here aren't here today. Now I'm gonna give you just a, a brief reason for some of this happening. Our enemy is the devil. And the devil wants to do anything and everything that he possibly can to deter the word, to block the word. Well, he had one this morning, but he sure made a little smoke come from hell. <laughs> so I say that to you just to, to set the tone. Uh, hear the scripture now. First, from Matthew's Gospel, and I've just got to introduce this before uh, we read it. Uh, 
Here in Matthew's Gospel with the Beatitudes, this is the first public ministry that Jesus had. Uh, and he's got 3,000 people that, that they had gathered before him, and he had them sit down, uh, and they had heard about him, but they hadn't heard his message. And then he starts giving, <clears throat> giving them the Beatitudes. Now, the Beatitudes are blessings. We'll get more into that later. So, in Matthew 5, the 6th verse, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Then in Romans, we have... This verse, it kind of explains that. Uh, Romans 3, 21, and I'm going to probably read through 25 rather than 24. But hear the word. But now a righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known to which the law and the prophets testified. The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference from those who have sinned and fallen short, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that comes by Christ Jesus. God presented Him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in His blood. He did this to demonstrate His justice because in the forbearance he had let the sins committed beforehand go unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so that we are just and one justified by the man who is, has faith in Jesus. So it's all about faith in Jesus. And to have faith in Jesus, you've probably heard the word, you've got to repent. Now, I'm going to wander around. What is repenting? Well, repenting is turning around from where you're going to where you should be going. Now, I want to give you a good illustration of that that maybe you can mark and understand. Um, I love to sail. Uh, I got a sailboat. I had a, for years I sailed with a friend on his and I loved to sail. We were living at that time in Cumming, Georgia and Lake Lanier was right there. And got a sailboat and my wife Lynn, who I love dearly, and I have a different understanding of sailing. Uh, I want to hike out on the side of the boat and get the most wind we can and go as fast as we can. And she wants to just go around the cove real easily. Uh, I had trouble getting a crew together. And so I finally uh, relented and said, Lynn, you can be the captain. You can have the tiller and you can take it where you want to go. And I'll be the crew. And... Uh, this day, our youngest daughter was with us, uh, and uh, she at that point was uh, in middle school. And uh, so we went to my favorite spot to enter the lake and uh, unloaded the boat from the trailer and, and got everything ready. And boy, we took, and the wind was nice that day. We caught it, and we were going downwind. And I happened to look behind us. There was a tremendous cloud, and there was some rumbles coming from it that were quite loud and flashes of lightning. And uh, so I said, uh, well, then we're going to need to come about. Now, that's the nautical term for turn around, and it's where you repent. Uh, and so she did everything almost right. Uh, in my perspective, it was almost right anyway, but it, 
we turned 180 and then we immediately turned another 180 degrees heading in the same way we were going with the storm getting ever closer. I said, okay, sweetheart, let's try that the second time. I'm sure it's going to work a little better. The same thing happened. So I said, okay, I'll take care of this. Boy, was that a stupid statement to make. So I take over, and for the third time, we make a 360-degree turn. I said, okay, we got problems. So dropped the sail, got the auxiliary motor going, which was a little trolling mower, and turned around. Could head into the wind then. Went no more than 70, maybe 100 yards. And I said, let's see what a sail will do now. And then at that point, could catch the wind. We were just in a narrow spot, and the wind was just doing its thing as wind will do. So we started tacking. That's where you're going at an angle into the wind and you're never sure how great an angle you're gonna make. Uh, 45 degree is what you shoot for and if it's only 25, then that'll work too. But this is all an example of how our repenting is. Sometimes we've got to tack a little bit and, and, and adjust to what we need to be doing in repenting. Well, we kept doing this, and um, I noticed as we were that the storm was moving a little bit because Lynn and, and Rebecca had said, uh, what are we supposed to do? And I said, pray. That's what all of us need to be doing right now. <clears throat> and so we got back, and uh, the storm hadn't come to us yet. We got the boat loaded back on the trailer and everything stored away, and that storm had gone completely around us. Now, it was coming right towards us. Uh, how did it do that? By the grace of God. Because there we were out there with a 22-foot lightning rod made of aluminum saying, come and get me. Uh, so we never know about repenting and how it's going to work out uh, we can be convicted of our sins, but how is it going to work out? Just a, a snapshot of this. People have favorite restaurants they'll go to to get an order. Now, sometimes it's McDonald's or it's Chick-fil-A or it's Wendy's or it's something else. Usually it's fast food because you can get it in a hurry. And we all live in a hurried world, don't we? Now, I know none of you have ever experienced your order being messed up when you've turned it in. <laughs> I, that never happens. No, no, it happens. And people will go back. You know, it can happen a hundred times, and they'll still go back. But it's an interesting thing if the church changes one thing, some people get upset and they leave. One thing. Now that's not what we're supposed to be about. Uh, first of all, this church and any other church is Jesus' church. It's not my church or your church. This is the church of Jesus Christ. It is a mission statement and mission station in the community we're in to sow the love and the grace of Jesus in every way we can and to bring those that don't know God to God because who does God not love? God loves Every one of us may not love what we're doing, but loves every, <clears throat> every one of us. One of the best examples I saw of this is Bishop Tutu was uh, in from South Africa, and he had carried the trials of reconciliation, if you remember that back in a few years back, a few couples, 
decades back now. And uh, he was speaking uh, to a, a group of seminarians. And there was one young man there. And he got up and he was very angry at him. He said, you shouldn't have done that. There should have been justice. And uh, Bishop Tutu very gently said, that young man, are you, are you a Christian? He said, yes, I am. And he said, so if you die today, now stay with me, I, you expect to go to the pearly gates? And he said, yes. And he said, now what if just inside the pearly gates you see Adolf Hitler? Are you going to say, I don't want in? He said, well, that's not going to happen. He said, I didn't say he was there, but God's love and grace can cover anybody. So we don't know who's going to be there. So are you going to say you don't want to be there? He didn't say anymore. So that's what we have to understand. We're not God. Uh, what happened today was frustrating for us getting here. Uh, but we're here. Now, why was it frustrating? Uh, there's a message that needs to be heard, and that message needs to be understood. So let me take you a little more. I remember, oh, I think I was in the third or fourth grade, and this little uh, silly, stupid poem the kids learned. I know none of you ever did that when you were in school, but... Um, uh, it goes like this. One bright day in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords, and shot each other. A deaf policeman heard the noise. He came in, shot the two dead boys. Now, if you don't believe this yarn is true, this asked the blind man. He saw it too. <laughs> Everything in that silly thing is a contradiction. It's, it, it's an oxymoron. It, it can't be. But it's a statement of how the world is most of the time and has been. If you read through the Old Testament, you find this still repeated stupid things that can't be, and it continues to go on. Uh, and there comes a time that you say, well, what is truth? Well, when I was in the 10th grade, I believe it was in high school, uh, we had to study... Uh, Shakespeare, and one of our assignments was one of his sonnets. Uh, so I learned a sonnet then, and it stuck with me. Uh, Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love that alters when alteration finds, nor bends with a remover to remove. Oh, no, it is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is a star to ever-wandering bark. If this be air and upon me prove, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Now there's truth in that. It's not scripture. There's truth in the first one. It's ridiculous to understand the state of the world. Because who is in control in the world? I want an answer. No. Satan. Satan. Remember, Jesus was tempted after 40 days in the wilderness by who? By Satan. And what did Satan say in all of those temptations? You can have it all if you'll just bow down to me was the bottom line. And Jesus answered every temptation he gave them with what? It is written. So then... Satan quoted scripture. So then Jesus had to tell him what the scripture really said. So quoting scripture is one thing, but understanding scripture and what it's saying to us is something else. So how do we deal with this today? Truths and what are truths? Here's a little more scripture for you. First of all, only God is righteous. We aren't. We can be filled with God's righteousness, but it doesn't come from within us as it does from God. And God 
doesn't live in time and space. A year is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like, excuse me, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. God doesn't live in time. God knows everything about us and every step we're going to take before we ever take it. And God intercedes at some points to offer us a correction. To offer us a correction. But we've got to take the offer. Now the ultimate altar offer came when God became one of us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, the Word was Jesus. There in the beginning. Everything that Jesus did, including his conception, birth, and death, was prophesied in the Old Testament. Every single thing. Now, for that to have been matched out as it did, someone did some calculations. If he took the state of Texas, that's a pretty good sized state to take, isn't it? Uh, and you were to fill it up with silver dollars for everything that was prophesied that Jesus would do and happened, and everything did happen, how deep would it be in the state of Texas? Would it even cover the state? It would cover the state six feet deep. Each silver dollar being one of the prophetic things. Now that's a bunch, or probabilities on one of the prophetic things. That's a bunch. But that's an understanding God knows what's happening and he's leading us to be his people. And he's calling us today to wake up. So what is truth? Is truth what I know? Is truth what I want? Is truth what I think makes sense, but maybe it doesn't? Or is truth God? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the truth is Jesus. The truth is God. And God desperately wants everyone to know him. Everyone. Church attendance has dropped dramatically across the nation. These statistics may not be quite 100% correct, but they give the example. 40% of the churches out there have almost evaporated in the number of people that are still members. 40%. They are losing members. Some won't even tell them they're gone. They're just gone. It's devastating. Now, there's another 25, 30% that uh, report that they're growing. But all they're really growing on is catching members that are leaving one church to another. There's no new converts coming in that. Uh, that's not really growth. And it finally comes down to less than 10% of the churches in the United States, North America, less than 10% are having any growth at all. And very few, 2%, are having significant growth within their communities in bringing the unchurched in. Now what does that tell us? We've got a mission field before us 
that needs to be answered. So what are we going to do? Say, well, preacher, that was real good. I hope something like that takes place and happens here. What are you going to do? Uh, What's your call? Every one of us has something we can do. We have a young man in our church. His uh, mother is... uh, terminally ill and he's caring for her <clears throat> he himself is has some trouble or has to have crutches uh, he's not in the best of shape physically but you know what he's doing he's reporting every good thing that's happening on Facebook and telling about it and gaining more and more followers and those people are starting to come to church. Imagine that. He can't get out and knock door to door very easily, but he can sure use the technology we have for the kingdom. And we live in a point now that every people's group in the world can have God's word in their language. There's still a few that don't have it. Very primitive tribes in, in But we've got to do more than just give them the word. We've got to show them how the word brings change and brings righteousness of God flowing through us into them. So that's what this is about today. It's about where are you and what should you be doing? Now, I saw a lot of chaos happening this morning, and I saw a lot of people working on it. And that was a good thing because we can help one another. We don't have to do this alone. We can help one another. And there's so many ways that we can help. And we can be a vehicle for the righteousness of God to be felt by those that don't know him. So that's our call. That's our call. Here's some scripture. Salvation and new life is only by God's love. We have not received the spirit of the world. That's Satan. Insert there but the Holy Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. Uh, That's 1 Corinthians 2, 12. And then from Psalms 32, 5, the last part. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgive the guilt of my sin. David said that. The man after God's own heart and the man who made a whole lot of sins too. But he did repent of his sins. So he shows us the example of how much God loves us. He can put up with our stupidness. That's the easiest way I can say it. With our saying, I can't do that. I'm afraid People might make fun of me. Jesus died on the cross and they made fun of him. But he paid our salvation. And it's worth the cost. So, where are you today? One more little note in scripture. None of us are masters but rather the servant. Abbreviating this, some of you may have heard about Apollos in the scripture. He was a gifted, gifted speaker. And Priscilla and Aquilus took him aside after they had heard him speak. This is in Acts 18, 26. 
and they showed him a more acceptable, accurate way of preaching the gospel. Now, what did he say? I know everything. You don't need to tell me anything. No, he accepted. He didn't know everything. And what we have to all understand is none of us are the master. And every one of us is a servant. So let's start serving. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the indwelling Holy Spirit, let's start serving. Let's serve up and serve more. Amen? Amen. Okay, amen. Thank you, Al. We appreciate that message. Very, very pointed. Our final hymn today is Have Thine Own Way, Lord, verses 1 through 4. Let's stand and sing together. sisters let us serve let us reach out let us make a difference now hear this benediction let us go forth into the world in peace and dedicated to your service O lord let us hold fast to that which is good rendered in no person evil for evil strengthen the faint-hearted support the weak help the needy and the afflicted and honor all people. Let us love and serve you, O Lord, rejoicing in the power of your spirit. And may your blessings be upon us and remain with us always. In Jesus' name, amen.